Well, thanks for joining us again uh, on a porch. The pastor's porch, something we started doing several weeks ago during this whole shutdown. And today, or this evening, uh, Kevin Vaughn's my guest. <laughs> I, don't, I, I say that and I feel like a talk show host. <laughs> yeah, I, I so I don't mean to do that. But uh, uh, Kevin Vaughn is a pastor at Rock Branch. Um, Kevin was in our church uh, in the year of 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, then he went to Reggie's church and he served with Reggie for a while. Then God called him to Rock Branch. So just share us a little bit about where you're at, what's going on with your church. God's really blessing, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah. Great job. So kind of uh, tell know, us what's like going great on. Great job. But we, hey, we, I hear a lot uh, of good stuff, we've, man. We've stayed, uh, uh, the Lord's blessed us and continue to bless us. And, uh, man, we've um, just uh, followed his pathway. And, uh, you know, was talking earlier, uh, you know, about people giving and uh, being in the midst of the community and being able to serve. And, uh, man, we've We've been a, we've been able to be a blessing because God's continued to bless mm -hmm. us through people giving and serving and being there working and uh, man it's just you know pastor and I, I never would have imagined being honest with you when mm -hmm. when you know when I uh, was at Pleasant Grove and then going to Cedar Grove and watching Reggie and uh, and being a part of that but no no matter how deep you get in ministry pastor it's a lot different a lot different <laughs> it's a lot different <laughs> but it's good it's good but we've been blessed we've been blessed well I was just talking to Kevin about they were in the process, just about to build a new building. What, what, what was that we, building? We, we were going to build on to our back uh, of our where our worship center now is, and our oh the gym right. uh, used to be, and we were going to build on to the back of that, trying to hopefully and uh, do some different things. But uh, then this happened, and luckily hadn't started anything like that. And um, with the other resources we had, we were able to minister, and so the Lord yeah, took care of us. I just so. love that. I, I was thinking that okay, here he is, are about to build a building. And as a church, they could get real selfish and say, man, we're not getting a bill. But they took, am I saying this yeah, right? Yeah. They took that money, I don't know if all of it, but a lot of that money and was able to minister to the community. And I realized, Kevin, and I know you know this, is that the community is not asking uh, about what theology you are, what denomination. They're asking, can you give me hope? That's right. Can you, can you help me? And so I think that many times churches are answering questions nobody's asking, but Rock Branch, I'm telling you, that uh, that church has, has come alive. Uh, he's done an incredible job, incredible job, working his tail off. I know that. And uh, But I'm telling just uh, he and Leanda and their, and their kids, and we're going to talk about uh, one of his kids tonight, just uh, what happened when he was born, that kind of thing. Reggie and I talked about last week, uh, Reggie, your former pastor, and we were all, we've all been at church together right. at least one time. That's right. But uh, Reggie, talked. we talked about being encouraged by other mm -hmm. people. And as a pastor, you say it's different. I understand that. But as a pastor, what would you say is the number one need of you as a pastor now that you need from people, your church? What's your need? What's the need? Well, I mean, just you and Reggie talked the other day and uh, being an encouragement. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of times that, um, and I'm sure, you know, of course you know, and, and Reggie and, and now me, um, you know, there's a lot of times we, we spend a long time with God in prayer uh, and and begging God for answers yeah. of, you know, how are we are to go ahead in the next days? How are we to do, especially now the way things are, and mm -hmm. what's the decision-making process? Lord, what do we need to do? God, what's the direction that we need to go? And, um, you know, sometimes in the midst of that, uh, when praying, you'll get a short text from somebody that may just say, hey, look, just had you on my heart. I uh, want you to know I love you and praying for you. And, you know, to them, that's just, uh, you know, hey, just going to text the pastor right quick. Right. But to me... Uh, when somebody says that or when they text that or they just call to check on you, man, that is, that's in my life and I'm sure in your life, um, man, that's an encouragement to say, you know, sure. God telling you, hey, look, there are people praying for you. There yeah. are people with you because just like Elijah, we can feel like sometimes, hey, we're the only one in this fight. That's right. Uh, that's right. But God always shows up and shows us and sends people into your life to say, you know what, yeah. you're, you're not the only one in this fight and there's people with you. And yeah, you. and we've all felt alone. We, I mean, we, we talked about that last week. There's yeah. there's times when Reggie and I have called, and I know that you were, man, you were Reggie's right-hand man, and when you left to go to Rock Branch, <laughs> Reggie called me and said, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Kevin's leaving. Uh, but, you know, guys like you, uh, you were there as a support. Now you're that pastor. Yeah. And I realized in my life that, that uh, we, need, we need people. We need those encouragement yeah. in our life yeah, because absolutely. it's tough sometimes. It really is tough. Um, Rock Branch is um, kind of on the verge of Hart County and Elbert County, That's more right. in Elbert County, I know, but uh, they started out when he came, and I, he even went back. He worked at Mid-South, and one yep. of the things I know about Kevin, and I think, it's, I think it's one of the greatest things that can be said about a pastor, and that is 
people talk about how real Kevin is. And I think, uh, you know, you worked at Mid-South all those years. Then there was a time that you went back to work at Mid-South yeah. just so the church could do some more things. Yeah. That's the heart of a pastor. Yeah. Now he's going back full time. But the real being real and being being approachable, and not being the pastor that's you know the CEO kind of guy, the guy that's a, uh, that's a, hey, I'll do whatever. And um, I think that's transformed his church. I, I really believe that, Kevin. I think you and Leanda have have shown that you're willing to do whatever. And um, you've been around you've been around for a while in this area. You know, you're through the where the crow yeah, flies. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, I'm not forward. No, uh, not at all. Yeah. But um, Kevin, how old is Caden now? Caden's. Um, have to think about it. He's uh -oh. 14. 14. 14. Wow. Kevin, uh, Kevin's son, Ke Kevin's son, Caden, uh -huh. was born and uh, he was born with a defect. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to allow Kevin to share that with you because I know that as a pastor, you weren't a pastor then. No. <laughs> but now as a pastor, God's allowed you to use that yes. to minister to yeah. so many. Yeah. So share, share that whole story. Would you do that? Well, Caden was born um, in 2005 um, with a... Uh, something called biliary atresia. Uh, he didn't have any bile ducts from his liver to his intestines, and um, he was born without his gallbladder. Um, and, of course, I didn't know the Lord at that point. I mm, didn't know the Lord mm, at that time. Remember and, that. Um, so um, we, we went into first surgery. And of course, during this time, my, my dad passed away mm. in September, and then Caden was born in October. Wow. And um, so, you know, we were in a – I was I was just in a, in a chaotic position in my life at that moment in time. And, um, you know, Caden was born. It looked like everything was fine. He had a, just a normal birth. Everything was good. Um, and that was in October. In December, we ended up in um, Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, having his first surgery right before Christmas. And I had never not been at home during Christmas. And I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite holidays. And uh, we spent Christmas in um, uh, Scottish Rite in Atlanta wow. at that point. And, um so it, it was just a, a big mess. I, I really, during that whole time, and it went on until 2008, back and forth to the hospital and doing different things, because he was put on the transplant list right. uh, directly after that. And um, so, you know, during that whole time, I, we still lived like we wanted to. Uh, we, of course, we were attending Pleasant Grove, came, you know, periodically. We weren't, uh, we, we weren't uh, normal uh, people, we were almost like visitors every yeah. couple of months or something and uh, coming in and, and, you know, just kind of doing the church thing, playing the church game and mm. um, living our life. And uh, But in 2008, and during this whole time, I really got mad at God. I really mm. didn't want anything to do with God. I might not have showed it. Um, I might not have made it vocal to him, but he knew my heart. Yeah. And I just really, I was angry at him for what I thought that he had allowed to happen in my life my mm. dad passing away. You know, and here I am going through this with my son when you really feel like you need that father wow. in your life to, to kind of guide you. And, and I always call my dad every day. I'd always call him. I'd call him. I'd say, what are you doing now? Mm. And uh, so, you know, there were times during that whole process that I really wanted to just pick up the phone and call him and say, you know, hey, what are you doing now? Wow. Can you help me? And um, so, but in 2008, he had, a, he had a liver transplant in July. He actually had it on um, July the 4th, Independence Day. And, um, you know, we... He had his transplant. We were in Egg, uh, Eggleston at that time. And um, he come out. Nurses told us, said, man, he is, he is doing so good. First five days, man, he's, we're going to have him up. He's going to be out of this place in no time. Mm. Well, for the next three weeks, I watched my son go downhill every day. Uh, there were times we, we pulled him through the hospital. In a, uh, I remember in a red wagon, in a radio mm. flyer wagon, um, he couldn't hardly move, and this was the middle of the night. This was 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, taking him to go get ultrasounds or uh, scans because everything was coming back up. Everything was, he was just so sick. And um, I remember during that whole time, that whole process in July and August, that I just really started getting just more and more angry with God. Mm. And uh, I remember Reggie praying. Uh, he came to the hospital and see us, seen us, and you came uh, to the hospital also and seen us, but I remember that Reggie came... And I remember in the hallway in front of the nurse's station, uh, Reggie stopped us. We got in a circle, and he said, let's pray. And I remember bowing my head, but I remember thinking in my head, I don't want to pray. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this. Wow. Um, so he kept getting worse and worse. Um, and during September, things had gotten a little bit better, and he, he was actually, uh, had been, I think, at that time back and forth to the Ronald McDonald house, but we were actually back in the hospital at the time. And I had came home. I had chicken houses at the time, 
I came home and I was um, uh, doing some work there and I called Leanda and I said, you know, I said, uh, I'm going to do a little work here and, and uh, I'm going to get some things in order and, you know, hey, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow or whatever. I'll come out there. and um, Anyway, so she called me. He was running a fever again and he was hurting and we'd been through this back and forth and it was just another something. And uh, I remember getting in my truck and headed to Atlanta and the whole time, um, just almost mad and, mm. and angry still at God. And, but I remember as I got closer to Spaghetti Junction, there weren't many people on the road, and I, I, I just got off the phone with Lynn, and Caden was, Caden was still hurting. He couldn't get up. He couldn't walk. And um, I remember going up under Spaghetti Junction, and uh, God broke me. Mm. Wow. And, um, <laughs> you know, I always say that I could have called any of my friends that night and any one of them would have been out there in a, in a couple of hours. But the one that was with me that night, I answered his call when he called my name. Mm. But I didn't have to wait on him to be there. Mm -hmm. He was with me at that moment. And, Perfect. Um, when I, as I was going, like, you know, I just had gone on the phone with Leander with, with Caden Hurden and couldn't get, couldn't get up and couldn't walk. And um, I remember praying as I was going to, to Eggleston, and I gave my heart to Christ mm. and just sort of surrendered that white flag of, hey, look, God, I can't do this anymore. I don't, so you know, my life's broken. Uh, I don't, I can't do this. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I'm not the father that I need to be. I'm not the husband that I need to be. And uh, so anyway, I, I started praying with God. And I heard God tell me that night, he said, he said, you know what? He said, if you'll always, he said, you're surrendering your life to me. He said, if you'll always walk with me. He said, if you'll give me everything, he said, I'll never leave you, and I mm. promise you that. Mm. I'll always be with you, and I'll take care of not only you, but I'll take care of your family. Yeah. And uh, so I, I come into Eggleston that night, man, I, I remember parking in the parking deck and coming up the elevator and just almost at a flat run trying to get to <laughs> where he was and where my wife was. And there was a, a long, when you go up to the, uh, the transplant floor, um, there's a long green hall and uh, just sort of running through, and there's two sets of doors you've got to go through, and as I entered the second door, and I'm I'm almost at a I don't know I, I'm on I'm I'm my child's hurting and and my wife's there, but I'm almost on cloud nine at the moment because wow. man I just surrendered my life to Christ, yeah, and, you know, and, and I'm just in a just in a joyful just thankful mode of Him and who He is. I turn the corner and Caden's standing there and he's smiling at me at the board, wow. and with Leanda and, and the nurses, one of the nurses there that we we grew to love that just became part of our family. She was, she was sitting there also, but they were all smiling at me. And I turned the corner. And as soon as I turned the corner, and I saw Caden smiling. God said, I'll always be with you. Wow. And uh, so, uh, you know, that was in September. And, uh, of course, I was a new Christian. Yeah. I didn't know exactly what. I knew he was sick. And he kind of came home and, uh, in October and November. And, uh, and you don't know this. Because um, I came and gave my testimony at, at Pleasant Grove after that. Mm -hmm. One of the scariest things I've ever done, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I never had spoken in front of people. Yeah. But, uh, but during that time, I, I started coming to Pleasant Grove um, during 2008. Uh, Leanda couldn't because she was at home with sure. with, with Caden, um, and he couldn't get it around. But there was a sermon you preached, and I don't even remember, I don't remember what you preached. Um, but, you know, I had, I had surrendered my life to the Lord, and... And I really didn't know what to do. I was coming to church. I was doing kind of the, the church thing and yeah. just trying to. And you preached a sermon one Sunday morning, and I was by myself, and I was sitting up on the, I don't, I don't know if I still got it, but the, the, the back row up on the platform and the, the seats on the back. And I was sitting up on the back wall, and I was listening. And when you preached that morning, God spoke to me, and he said, uh, he said you gave me your life. Mm -hmm. I told you I'd never leave you. But, Kevin, you're, you're not. You're not growing. You're not plugged in. You're not, you're not where you need to be. You're not living as the husband and the father that you need to be right now. Wow. And, um, and Leanne will tell you this, but I, I, I left the, you, you ended the sermon that morning. I couldn't get out of the church fast enough. I run and jump in my car. On the way home, I was in tears, praying, going down the road. I come in the house. I come running up. Leanne was upstairs with Caden in his bedroom now. And I run upstairs and Leanne looks at me and I'm, I'm, squalling like a baby <laughs> i can't talk to her i walk in and she is what is wrong what has happened and um i grabbed her hand and i pulled and she was holding caden and i pulled her down on the floor i got on her knees i pulled caden in with us and i started praying mm -hmm. and uh I, I told god i said god whatever you have for my life wow whatever you want for our family 
God, I'll be, I'll, I will walk in it. God, I will do whatever you want me to do. God, I can never thank you enough for what you've done for me, my family, my child, God, that you've allowed him to come out of the hospital. And it's not that things were perfect, but we knew at that, I knew at that moment who held my family, who yeah. held me and my tomorrows. Yes, sir. And uh, so, man, you know, from that January, man, is, you know, we got plugged in. I got plugged in at Pleasant Grove. I joined the choir. Can't sing a lick. <laughs> but I joined the choir and uh, got plugged into Sunday school. And God started tithing. God mm -hmm. taught me to tithe. Um, and, you know, giving out of, you know, not just out of the abundance, but just giving because of what joy I found in Christ and right. what he'd done for me. And, uh, man, finding that joy in giving. Yeah. Um, and then uh, then God called us to Cedar Grove and uh, started working there, but then he called me to preach. And that's, uh, you know, and those that's one of the moments you're, God, you, you might want to rethink this whole thing. I don't know <laughs> yeah. that you know what you're doing, but yeah, yeah. Um, but it's uh, he has he forever changed me. Then my wife actually got saved. I know I'm going to finish up, but mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, actually during Pleasant, uh, Cedar Grove going. I broke my toe. George was playing Florida one, one Saturday, and I don't think we fared <laughs> too kicked, well. Did you kick the team? No, we were outside <laughs> playing football, and I, I broke my toe. And uh, that was on Saturday. And Sunday morning, I taught Sunday school, and I could I just couldn't get up and walk. I just, I, it just hurt too bad. So, And I'm a baby when I'm hurt anyway. Oh, I'm yeah. allergic to pain. Yeah. So uh, I told Leanna that morning, I said, honey, I said, she was asked, she said, honey, I ain't studied my lesson. And I thought, well, that's it's real good, honey. You're the, you're the Sunday school teacher's wife. You're going to be studying your lesson. <laughs> but uh, she said, well, what am I supposed to teach? I said, just give your testimony. Mm. She she was a nervous wreck when she left, and I didn't know this till she got home, but she, uh, on the way to Cedar Grove that morning to teach, she was asking God, she said, God, I, I don't know what to share. What am I supposed to share? What is my testimony? And she said, God spoke to her and told her, said, you don't have one. Oh, my. And um, so she got saved on the way to Cedar Grove that morning, and then through her testimony of that morning, um, if I'm not mistaken, Reggie could tell you for sure, but I think 10 more people got saved Amen. that morning yep. uh, just because of the of you know being faithful to realize, hey, look, it's not about walking an aisle. It's not about praying a prayer. It's not about baptism. It's about a heart turned over to Christ That's and it. given to Him. So, um, But, uh, you know, the, it's... The, the journey's still being written, hey, and, uh, man, exactly. we're, we're just enjoying it and just trusting God to lead us. So. You know, I think that uh, you just said it, you know, Leanne to get saved, that's great. But when did she get saved? When did she get saved? After God, after you got right yeah, with God. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen it, you know this, we've seen it many, many times of where when when God gets when God gets the husband right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, you don't usually see men coming to church with the kids without the wife. It's usually the opposite. opposite. But when God does a work in the husband's life, the head of the house, they all follow. Yeah, that's right. Scripture says they'll be led by their children. And many times people will come in, they're thinking they're bringing their kids to church because it's their kids that need to be in church. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit doesn't work in their life. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, right. I'll be honest with you, I don't care if you're the pastor's wife, deacon's wife, or just somebody that just walked in off the street. It doesn't matter what your title is. Yeah. We all need the Lord. Amen. And that's God right. used your son, uh, the sickness of your son yeah. uh, in your life. And then probably even in hers, but she was probably thinking, okay, I'm already supposed to yeah, be saved yeah, kind of right. thing, you know. That's right. Um, and I just, I, I appreciate that. I, I know that, no, you weren't in ministry then, but God knew you'd be in ministry. Yeah, yeah. And God knew that you would use that story on and on and on. I told my, I think it was two weeks ago or last week even that I shared about Leslie's sickness yeah. with E. coli and stuff like that. And it's still as real today as it was then. Yeah, that's right. I can go back to that hospital night and stuff and, and know what I went through and as you can too. I mean, I, it's just it's just amazing. The stuff we go through is not necessarily for us. God is preparing us for what He's prepared for us. That's right. And He's going to use it, use that story, and use us down the road. So, um, I want to finish up this evening just by having you uh, kind of share so how people can know the Lord and just pray for our families before we close out. Would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in talking about. Families and struggles, um, Chris, we, we all go through struggles. Mm. Uh, we all have valleys and, uh, you know, and people may be watching the, today. Um, you may be going through a struggle. You may, be ha you may have something in your life that, you know what, and I, I talked about it last night um, during a sermon. Uh, and there's a song called The Father's House. And one of the lyrics in that says, failure is never final when, when the father's in the room. Wow. 
and <laughs> um, you know um, we can we can look at different things in our life and you may be going through something uh, you know listening to this you may be going through something and you think man I have failed or how in the world am I going to get through this failure or how in the world am I going to get through this that's happening to my family um, you know I said a while ago this, the journey's still being written yes sir the journey's still being written and you know, who better to guide the story than the author of it? Mm. And uh, when we trust Christ, when we give Him our life, and we trust in uh, His life, His death, and His resurrection, man, we, we, we not only go from, you know, the Bible says you do, well to, you do well to believe there's one God. Satan also believes there's one God. Going further than just saying, hey, look, I believe there's a Jesus, or I believe there's a God, but going further, hey, I trust in my Savior Jesus. Yeah, sure. I, I give Him my life. I trust on Him. I believe that His Word is truth sure. in every word of it. Um, and, and knowing that, uh, you know, we've, our life's not, not been perfect. Uh, we've been back to the hospital with Caden different times for different things. Uh, and you say, well, you know, I, I, I say God healed him. God, at oh, that very right. night, I've got to know that God's hand was upon him. Whatever he was going through that day, God healed him right then, took care of him. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had struggles and different things, but... We know now who holds all of our tomorrows. Yes, we know who holds everything about us. And you may be listening tonight and saying, you know what? I want to know. I, mm. I want to trust in him. I want to give him my life. Man, I've been angry with God. I've mm. shook my fist at God. Uh, man, I, I've not wanted nothing to do with him, but my life's in shambles. I'm broken. It's in pieces. It's a mess. Mm. Uh, one thing I know, God can take a mess and turn it into a masterpiece. Yes, sir. And uh, he can build you into what he wants you to do. And I also shared this last night, and I know we're probably getting to the end, but um, ask yourself, where, where does my story begin? Mm. Do I have a starting point? You know, a lot of us can say, well, I'll tell you, I, I remember I walked an aisle when I, was, when I was eight years old, or I walked an aisle when I was 10 years old, or, you know, I, I walked an aisle at Pleasant Grove during mm. my youth. I remember yeah. very vividly, me and Brad Graham were sitting next to each other, <laughs> and I think Jeremy Massey was sitting yeah. next to us, and, uh, or Josh Massey and um, asked us, you've made everybody ask the question. You turn to your neighbor and say, do you know the Lord? Are you saved? And I couldn't answer that that yeah. day. Uh, and I walked an aisle and prayed a prayer. But I, I didn't no more know Jesus when I left there than I did when I got there. But it was when Jesus changed my life on the way to Atlanta when I fully accepted him, when I fully put my trust yeah. in him. Uh, he changed my life, and he can do that with anybody watching sure. tonight. It just takes a, a heart turned over to him That's fully, it. and he can do that. That's so, it. So it's good. It's well, good. Why don't you pray for us? And, yes. Um, if anybody's there, if, if anybody has not received Christ, you lead them through a sinner's prayer, and then just pray for our families, and we'll we'll call it a night. Okay. okay. Well, if that's you tonight, and man, you, you'd say, you you know what, I, I don't know the Lord, and I want to know Him. Uh, wherever you are right now, you can close your eyes, uh, bow your heads, and you can pray a prayer like this out of the attitude of your heart. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, I am broken. I'm a mess. God, my life is a mess. God, I don't know where to turn to from here, but God... Mm. I give you all that I am. Yes. Lord, I surrender my life to you. God, I trust in you. I believe on you. And God, I, I trust in your life, your death, your resurrection. God, I believe that you're coming again one day to receive me unto yourself, yes. God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word, God. Lord, teach me and guide me. God, give me a passion for your word and your love. And God, continue to grow me. Lord, I want to live for you the best way I know how. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for grace. Dear Jesus, Lord, I pray that you'd be with anyone that prayed that prayer tonight, God. Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with us. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with Pleasant Grove and Cedar Grove, God, and Rock Branch, God, and all the churches in our area, God, where the word is being preached, where the gospel is being proclaimed. God, that you would continue to do a mighty work during this uh, COVID-19, this virus that's going on. God, I pray that you would continue to lead us to be the church, Lord, that you desire us to be, God, that we wouldn't go back to normal, but, Lord, we would continue to press forward with passion and joy. Right, right. Uh, God, uh, Lord, sharing the gospel with everyone that we come in contact with, God. Lord, I pray that if we, as we have services online, God, that you would use that to reach the masses. God, that you would continue to save those that need saving, God, that you would continue to draw those uh, prodigals back to you, God. Lord, that you would continue to grow your church, God, and uh, continue to bless, God, that we might be a blessing. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that you are. God, and all that you're doing, 
we give you all the honor and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Listen, Kevin, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank I'm you. so thankful for Brother, you to be Brother. here. A lot of times when we're pastoring, we're in the same area and we don't even get to hang out yeah, together. That's right. So that's this right. has made us get to get an opportunity to hang out. That's but right. if you've enjoyed tonight or maybe you made a decision tonight, give us a comment. Let us know that you made a decision. We'd love to get with you. Maybe you live toward where Kevin's at at Rock Branch. Man, I'm telling you, I, would, I, I can't go to a better church over there. I'm just telling you. Just um, let us know where you're at. If you made a decision, we'd love to get with you. Right. Hope you have a great night. Thanks for joining Thank in. You.